Willkommen, this is Julia. And this is Shane. Und this is Think Plant Based. Think Plant Based. Make sure to check out recipes, health tips, travel tips at www.thinkplantbased.com. And we're officially on iTunes, so please rate and write us a review on iTunes. Write us a review. Give us two stars, three stars, maybe five stars. <laughs> Let us know. Oh, for sure, Let's, five. Yeah, I mean, who would give us two stars anyways, yeah. right? <laughs> But yeah, make sure to do that because that's how we get found. You think it's sometimes quite confusing? What's the healthiest way to be plant-based? Definitely. Like you hear uh, research that says eat more meat, then you read a research that says don't eat any meat, and then you read research that cheese is back, butter is back. Right, and What after are the answers? 10 years, you're going to feel like plant ba being plant-based doesn't work? Yeah, I don't know. Joe, Rog Joe Rogan thinks that plant-based doesn't work. But good right. thing our guests can clarify some things for us. Dr. Matthew Negra, how's it going? Pretty good, how are you? Yeah, pretty good, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, pretty good, thanks. So we finally got someone who can clarify things, because I'm not an expert by many, any means. <laughs> right, <laughs> but there's so much confusion out there, even more and more, you know, like we see veganism is growing more and more, but there's still more confusion now happening. Yep, yeah. all the time, M misinformation everywhere. Yeah, right? Yeah. So tell listeners a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So um, I've been vegan for just about nine years now. I'm a naturopathic doctor, so I work with people um, mostly on lifestyle intervention, diet, exercise, and all that to treat a lot of their chronic diseases or whatever it is that they have going on. And uh, here in British Columbia, we're actually considered primary care physicians. So we pretty much see and treat all the same stuff as a family doctor. Um, and while we do have the ability to prescribe medications as well, we like to use other modes of treatment um, as well. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's the, those are the doctors I want to go to. Right? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I get all these pills and that's the first thing. Oh, yeah, you need a prescription. And you feel comfortable with, you can actually say, yeah, I'm vegan, you know, and you don't have to worry mm -hmm. like, Now hearing from the doctor, uh, you should have more like animal protein in your diet. Yeah, well, actually, my, what I always tell people is when they're given recommendations like that, just ask them why. Make, have them explain to you why they want you to do that and why it's going to help because that's where people get stuck. A lot of the, the nutrition information that you get handed, even from healthcare professionals, is really just personal opinion. It's not really right. based on, on the research a lot of the time. So, so that's just the, the most powerful thing you can say yourself is just why and ask them to explain why. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's a great uh, advice for people going to their doctors. Ask questions. Mm -hmm. Why? Why yeah. is this like this? Yeah. Why do I have to do And you're always in control. The, the patient yeah. is always in charge in any kind of a medical um, setting. Just uh, oftentimes you trust the doctor's judgment, rightfully so, because they've you know, gone to school. Um, I mean, I've gone to school for eight years to do what I do. Uh, but I also don't want people just to take my, my judgment at face value. I want them to ask questions. I want them to ask for resources if, if they want to see them and, and they can make the decisions for themselves. Yeah. Um, so what's an easy way to stick to a plant-based Uh, eating when you have such a crazy busy life, being a naturopathic um, doctor, yeah. <laughs> so patient to patient. Well, exactly. How yeah. do you even have time to eat? <laughs> well, it's funny. Uh, before starting my new practice just a couple uh, months ago, I was way more uh, schedule oriented and that like I, I had the same kind of breakfast, lunch and dinner every day. I'd eat them around the same times. Um, but now with my schedule all over the place, like Mondays, I'm working late. Tuesday mornings, I'm, I'm in there super early. Um, so I just eat very simply. I don't do a lot of the fancy stuff. My breakfast is just oatmeal with berries and I'll throw Delicious. some like flax seeds in and you know, just <laughs> yeah. a really simple meal. My yeah. lunch is just, you know, a quick bowl I throw together. If I'm really in a rush, sometimes I'll, I'll get this like quinoa bowl that from this place across the street from my clinic. And then for dinner, it's just really giant salads. I throw in some greens, uh, broccoli, a bunch of sweet potatoes and uh, beans or tofu for all the calories. And then um, I'll just make my own quick little avocado based sauce or maybe a lemon tahini kind of dressing. But I just eat super, super simply. Uh, I, I think uh, people often believe that, you know, plant based diet is super complicated and takes forever to prepare. And really, that's only if you're doing the super fancy stuff. Right. Uh, if yeah. you're if you're eating just super easy, whole foods, plant based meals, they tend to be pretty quick. 
That's true. Right. So how do you have time to prepare all these meals? Do you do prep work, you know, in the <laughs> evening before the, the next day or? I'm the worst for, for prep like that. <laughs> like, so, um, Takes time. again, like, like I said, I, I, eat, I eat super simple. So if, if, for example, Mondays I'm going in late, I start at two 30, I end at about eight 45. Um, in the morning I'll have my breakfast, I'll have my lunch and then I'll make something for dinner and take it to go. Like I just do it day of. Yeah. Uh, might, might have some leftovers to, to use on the, the Tuesday for lunch. Cause that's the only meal I'll really need at the clinic. And then again, I'll make dinner that night and I'll use the leftovers for Wednesday. So I'm not somebody that does the whole week long, uh, batch cooking type oh, thing. Dude, that a lot of people do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it's great. I think I definitely should do that, but, uh, I just tend to do it day before day of, um, with my schedule, it works totally fine. Right. Yeah, whatever works for you, right? Yeah, exactly. Everyone's mm -hmm. going to be different. Some people need a big gourmet. They have the time to do it and right. enjoy it. So, yeah. like, we like to soak our beans, you know, and then we yep. cook a bunch of them, you know, in a big pot, and then we put them in a container and then we freeze them. We yeah. freeze a bunch of containers. And then we yeah. bring them out in the fridge and just make sure we always have some type of legume uh, from the freezer into their fridge so we can always eat some on the go. Right. Yeah, that totally. really helps. Yeah. Or like quinoa, we'll make a big batch, put it in the fridge and, you know, and that lasts, lasts for a couple like days. For almost two. Well, yeah. Yeah. You can get about three two, days. three days out of <laughs> it before it starts maybe going a little bit <laughs> old yeah, and not as fresh. And, <laughs> yeah. And right? especially uh, in, investing in something like, say, an instant pot or whatever just makes life so easy when it comes to that. Like the batch cooking beans or, or grains or whatever takes no time. You don't have to do anything. It's just you stick it in there yeah. and it all just gets done for you. Good What's point. your take on the instant pot for? like health wise as like cooking oh, food it's one of the best ways to cook food is to it maintain really? nutrition. Okay. yeah that's yeah, great uh, it, it has to do with uh, the short cooking time more than anything right because right. You, you just you cook while temperatures might be higher same with the microwave actually temperatures will reach such higher temperatures but it's for a short period of time so you actually um maintain a lot more nutrition that way oh, than you than you would otherwise well we better get an instant pot then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah i was always actually, worried about things you know like when things are quicker to cook i'm always lenient about health wise to go and maybe go on that trend because we know we've yeah. seen like the microwaves and the yeah and the things like that so it's just you know Waiting, so I would waiting actually, until the research is out. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would recommend uh, if you know of nutritionfacts.org with Dr. Michael Greger. Yeah. Um, yeah. He actually put out some videos on pressure cookers. And Ooh, so you can oh, watch okay. those. And he, he looks at all the research on pressure cookers and how it affects nutrition. And it's definitely one of the best ways to cook your food. That's great. In That's this day and age, we need, you know, quicker <laughs> beans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. You yeah. still want to eat healthy, but it needs to be quick, right? That's the key. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So what should a healthy vegan lifestyle definitely include because it's yeah. more like a lifestyle too not just a diet right i mean well start talking about the diet first you just want to make sure you're getting all the different whole plant foods in your diet on a regular basis so that's your fruits your vegetables your legumes whether that be beans or chickpeas or, or tofu or lentils uh, and then your some of your nuts and seeds and um and yeah really emphasize the the dark leafy greens so that, that's really it. It's super simple. People often want to complicate it. It's not that complicated. Just make sure you're eating a variety of these healthy foods and make sure you're eating enough of them because there are so few calories in plant foods compared to animal-based foods or processed foods for that matter. Um, and then outside of that, of course, exercise is super important, exercising every day. Uh, surprisingly, we often hear recommendations of like, say, 20 to 30 minutes of exercise per day. Well, right. for, for vigorous activity, what's optimal is probably more like 40 minutes. And for light activity, like um, brisk walking, for example, it's more like 90 minutes a day. So mm. even our recommendations aren't quite where they should be. But just making sure you're doing at least something every day is going to go a long way. And then there's stress management as well, whether that be mm -hmm. through meditation, yoga, or people have their own ways of doing it. Exercise itself could be a mode of, of stress management. So um, those are really the main areas I would try to hit. That's really good. good points. Do you suggest supplementation of any kind to go along with the vegan diet? Yeah, I think vitamin B12 is super important for anybody on a plant-based diet. Uh, given that we live up in British Columbia, definitely vitamin D is really important for most of the year because our, uh, we don't get that much sunshine. And even when we do, it isn't super powerful. Um, and then one that is maybe a little more controversial is an algal oil. So like an omega-3 supplement that's sourced from algae instead of fish. Uh, but the research on it is pretty mixed, whether it helps or not. So um, that's that's more up to the individual. I definitely think during pregnancy and lactation, it's really important. 
for the developing brain of the uh, infant or fetus during pregnancy. And then um, for later life, it tends to reduce risk of, of things like Alzheimer's. Um, so that might be a good idea as well. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. Right. So you actually said D throughout the year in British Columbia. Mostly, I would say throughout right? the, yeah. the, the, the there's a there's maybe a few months you can get away with if you're out in the sun regularly um, exposing a lot of your skin, but for most of the year because the issue isn't just that we need sunshine we need hot sunshine to produce vitamin D right, in our right. skin yeah. so we're only getting hot sunshine here maybe you know May through July or, or June through through August you know somewhere in that range um, uh, the rest of the year we just aren't. Even if it's sunny out, we're just not getting that hot sun that's going to help produce vitamin D. Especially in right. Vancouver, where the rain yeah. factor is like yeah, four yeah, to exactly. one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I've actually Definitely. noticed a big difference. I used to not supplement, I mean, here and there with some vitamin D. And the last couple of years, I've been really focusing, okay, when it's like September, October, start supplementing it. And I've actually noticed a big difference yeah, me in, too. in how I feel during the winter months. It's, right. it's quite that's amazing. Good. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. sure. I, th I mean, I've been vegan now for almost 20 years and most of the time I didn't even supplement the, with vitamin D. I mean, I grew up in Germany, so it's a bit different there, but I don't know. It wasn't really too much like the <clears throat> topic, you know, like when yeah. I heard it. Yeah, it's it's so subtle, like the differences. Like I don't have like this crazy burst more of energy, but I feel less sluggish, I feel, and like my brain's a little You're not more, too sleepy, yeah, I'm not as sleepy when I wake up. I don't yeah. feel as like groggy and it just helps. I think it helps with my circadian rhythm and just kind of, you know, keep my hormones in check. Right. And can you recommend like a vitamin D3? Because not all of them are vegan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it really depends. There, there are a bunch of different companies. Like I, I have one from AOR, which is, is a company uh, that I use at my clinic. There's, um, uh, there's a bunch of ones that you can get if you go to, say, Whole Foods or Choices. You just look up the vitamin D section of the supplement aisle, and they'll say on them vegan. If it says vegan, they're vegan. If it doesn't say vegan, most of the time they aren't. But um, right. I wouldn't be too concerned about a particular brand, to be honest. I don't okay. think it really matters. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So there's a lot in the media now, like, talking about, like, why actually vegans fail like what do you think yeah they Is don't it, have enough collagen or yeah they say oh, <laughs> i started feeling better when i ate meat or eggs and stuff like that yeah so most of those concerns come from people who are having gut issues and so when you've got say ibs or SIBO or something where your just gut isn't functioning properly you've maybe got some damage to your gut lining and you eat a bunch of fiber the fiber is going to irritate it further mm. the fiber itself isn't the cause you know it's not like the whole plant foods cause the issue but they're letting you know that it's there when you when you eat those foods right. so um what my kind of theory behind that is is when someone goes to eating something like eggs or fish where there's no fiber they're finally absorbing a lot of that nutrition they're finally getting some of the the fat and the calories from the food um and uh, of course without the fiber it's not going to aggravate the gut either and then they feel better when they're eating that more fibrous foods and they can't properly break it down and they've got some damage to their gut lining then they're going to have symptoms and probably not absorb all that much and that's what's going to lead to just feeling worse but the problem is it's a band-aid solution to go with the eggs or the fish or whatever in that case instead. And there's a really great program now from Dr. Angie Sadeghi, who's a plant-based uh, gastroenterologist. It's called Your Gut Connection. So if you're someone who's struggling with gut health, you can go to yourgutconnection.com and read up on the program. And it goes through six phases of just uh, starting off eliminating any kind of aggravating foods, just going down to very simple, like starchy uh, vegetables, well-cooked starchy vegetables, starchy fruits, um, cooking your vegetables, just things to make it super easy to digest. And then each phase, which lasts about two weeks per, um, you build up slightly more um, of the tougher foods to digest until you get into like the fermented foods at the end. And uh, it they seem to be getting really good results with it. And so it's definitely something I'd recommend. Oh, yeah, really I think a lot of people underestimate the gut and like what it it does for the body like the brain gut connection definitely yeah, it's like, huge yeah but it's, it's also big. important to know the root cause you know why why do you have these bacteria can you give us like some um guidelines for people like what are usually the causes to get 
like the indigestion and stuff like that. Oh, there, there's so many. Yeah. So uh, you just talked, you just talked about the gut brain connection. Well, even things like anxiety or other mental health issues can cause poorer digestion. Mm. There's also, um, if you eat a lot of red meat or eggs with all the choline and carnitine, they help foster bacteria that's actually harmful to us and produce harmful, um, metabolites. So, uh, if you actually take that, there's this molecule that's produced by our gut when they're subjected to carnitine or choline called TMAO, which is, or it's called TMA. And then it goes to your liver and gets converted to TMAO. And that is, it promotes atherosclerosis, uh, prostate cancer. It's very oxidative and inflammatory. But the crazy thing is, if you feed those same things to vegans, vegans don't produce it. And that's because the vegans don't have the bacteria in place to, to break it down. And so it's, it's just more, um, if you're eating those types of foods for your whole life and you switch to a plant-based diet all of a sudden, it's not necessarily that the uh, plant-based diet is causing these issues. You've been eating those things your whole life, and, and that's the bacterial environment you've created inside your gut. So um, it's it just it shouldn't be, or, or the the plant foods itself shouldn't be targeted as as the cause of these issues. It's just it's letting you know that there's an issue there, and they were caused from these previous things you were doing. Mind you, processed foods terrible as well. No right. fiber in that. Yeah. Tons of sugar yeah. <laughs> feeding all the all the crappy bacteria, um, and uh, yeah, there's just so many different reasons. Individual food sensitivities can cause issues with gut as well. That's something that's going to be super individual, though. It's not like I can point at any particular foods. Right. Um, yeah, there, there's tons of... When it comes to gut health, it's so complicated. And, uh, <laughs> we still yeah, don't there, even know, right? Yeah, right. exactly. It's there, so there are complicated. So just to get a bit of an know. idea, right? I just started so to scratch the surface, right? I, I, mm-hmm. I saw Dr. Sadegi uh, speak at the Plantrition Conference in September, and she had... I don't even know how many slides on the possible causes of SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And it's, it's fairly common now. It's one of the causes of uh, irritable bowel syndrome type symptoms. Right. And mm-hmm. it was just, I, I don't know, probably like 50 potential causes or something. It was just a massive, massive list. And wow. so, yeah, there are so many different things that can do it. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned stress because it's really... <laughs> It could be even your environment, yeah, right? Like, exactly. Do you know if there's a plant beside you and there's you know a different environment, it could cause your ecosystem in your stomach and everywhere to go all out of tune. So right. we're complicated beings, that's for sure. Yeah, we there's are. Not one size and, and, everything, and and we're more bacteria than we are human. So that's something to keep in mind too. That's true. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We're more more bacterial point. cells in and on us than, than we have human right. cells. <laughs> I just want to tell the listeners that used to be a, like vegan. Or that, or like plant based, you know, they can always come back. You know, it's not like now they start eating meat sure. and they feel better, but they kind of deep inside in their heart, they feel like, wow, I'm actually still connected to the vegan lifestyle. You know, they yeah. can always come back. But yeah, then and, this- and I don't, I don't blame any of them either. Uh, yeah, like they, often they get a lot of hate online, and I've seen a lot right. of that happening. But it's it's not their fault. It, it's a failure of the healthcare system, really, because we aren't taught how to deal with people who are plant-based or vegan. Always uh, people are being recommended non-vegan treatment options because the healthcare provider doesn't know how to work with someone within a vegan framework. Now that that's actually worked out pretty well for me uh, starting my practice because I'm getting all the, all the people who are just tired of getting those recommendations from their past Mm. healthcare providers. And in most cases, I find that these people who are say ex vegans or whatever you want to call them, they are, or they tried a lot of things before going to those measures. They tried everything. They tried all the recommendations that were given to them and nothing worked. And um, it's because nobody was probably able to address the cause and, and find the true cause. And then they start giving these other recommendations that really aren't backed by research. Like, I'm not sure of any research stating that eggs or fish improve digestive health. <laughs> well, um, I guess Joe Rogan yeah, says so. Yeah, I so mean, it yeah. must be true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> right? I, That's a I tricky thing. I just made a whole thing. post about his uh, whole game changers thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you did because there's so much confusion out there. And I feel some people just like think, oh, well, Joe Rogan's a great guy. He has all these great guests on their sh- on his show. But mm-hmm. that's pretty dangerous to trust someone that is not even a doctor or anything, you know? No scientific background, really. Or, re- or research, like a, yeah. like a published well, actually, researcher, right? In, in, his, in his case, he's actually admitted to not knowing that much. I remember when he had Kevin Smith. <laughs> on his uh, program who had a heart attack. Um, he's a famous Hollywood director, if, if people don't know. He had a heart attack, I think maybe a year or a year and a half ago, something like that. And then he actually went vegan afterwards and his health has greatly improved. And then uh, Joe Rogan's talking to him about all this and, and both of them just, just straight up say, 
we're both just two idiots. We don't know anything. We're just, you know, they're, they're just talking about their experiences and stuff, which is fair enough. You can, but, but, uh, when he starts talking about it as if it's scientific fact or whatever, that's when I have an issue. Yeah. Right. Uh, because he's just not familiar with the, with yeah. the actual literature. I yeah. feel like you get a lot of that on YouTube. Like people look for information on YouTube and they're like, well, this person had this, so I'm going to self-diagnose or this and that, this work. I feel like we get a lot of misinformation from YouTube. And oh, I think it's not just YouTube. Uh, lot, Dr. Lots. Google, too. Yeah, <laughs> Every, Dr. Everyone, Go- that too. Right, because we, 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 we call it Dr. Google because everyone just Googles ache. their symptoms. Yeah, I got yeah. a stomach <laughs> ache, and it's like, you're dying. And you're yeah, like, Whoa, yeah, it's like, it's like stomach ache. <laughs> yeah, you look up uh, a stomach pain, it's like stomach cancer. You look up headache, it's brain cancer. You look right. up, you know what? Whatever you look up, it's cancer all of a sudden. And, right. and, yeah, it's, it's, and, uh, and Google's it's really based scary. on, you know, how it's not based on the most truest information. It's based on who's clicked on it the most and the most yeah. most favorable amount of time someone has looked at a website. Definitely. Yeah. So you think you're getting this quality of information, but really it's just whatever they boosted up on, yeah. on the Google ranking system. Yeah, but, right. but then in there too, there are gems. Like there are, sure. there are some really great online resources too. Obviously nutrition facts are already mentioned. There's some great YouTube channels, but just of course they get mixed in with all the other stuff too. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. getting really hard to find and weed through all the mud to get, you know, what you're looking for through the internet these days. There is. And, but I mean, Joe Rogan really cares about vegans in a way, you know, I mean, <laughs> bad publicity is good publicity it on, for like, us. Every podcast that mm-hmm. he's had for the last little while. Right. Yeah, he talks cool. about it more than vegans. Yeah. Do. And we're yeah. like, dude, why are you keep talking about it? Then? And then like, <laughs> it's, it's weird, but it is. Hey, at least people are talking about it. Right. So yeah, we're getting out there. <laughs> Yeah. So what's your thoughts on, uh, we're going to switch to diets. What about like a keto diet, <laughs> plant-based or not like a high fat? Um, d- depends what for. Diet. So, so if it's, uh, I mean, there are certain types of epilepsy that's been shown to be effective, especially if, if, uh, the drugs are not tolerable or if they're suffering from side effects. And in a case like that, the benefits certainly outweigh the risks, right? It, right. The benefit of not having seizures is going to outweigh most risks you can possibly have. Yeah. Um, but then that often gets extrapolated to, oh, it's good for seizures. Therefore, it's it's good for brain health. And, you know, it, it's it's so ridiculous. Like Dr. Michael Greger does a great an, an, um, analogy. He's like, well, you know what else is good for seizures? Brain surgery. So why don't we all just get that? You know, it, it's it, there are obvious risks and and uh, reasons for not doing it. Now, obviously, it's big in the weight loss world now. Right. But even yeah. with with that, it's primarily uh, water weight that we're losing really fast. And during the initial period, we actually might lose more, uh, muscle, lean right. body mass, fat, fat loss actually seems to slow down when compared to a higher carbohydrate diet. Um, so there, there are issues there. They've actually done research on CrossFit athletes who are on the ketogenic diet and their quad muscles actually shrink because they're losing muscle what? so that yeah so, so there, there's all these claims that are being made about it but like and, and we have controlled feeding experiments the, or uh, sorry not controlled feeding experiments uh, metabolic ward trials where you just you test you have these people in the room you test everything you test um uh, you know their their weight loss fat loss muscle loss uh or gain and all of those measurements and like i was saying again fat loss slows the um the muscle loss actually speeds up and the higher carb approach seems to be better but if somebody really wants to do keto i think the plant-based keto is a far better option a you can consume way more fiber which is going to be super important and um i know uh it's not really a scientifically validated study but but dr danielle bilardo who has a podcast as well she actually did a little trial with her own health and actually measured her lipid levels before and after. And she actually didn't have any changes in, in measurements like cholesterol, triglycerides, and all these other things that I would have expected to change. So um, there's, there's potential there. It's just not something that's been really studied that much. Right. right. It's not suitable for everyone. Yeah. And I, I feel like people equate <clears throat> being skinny or being in shape to health. And I think mm-hmm. that we need to stop talking like, okay, well, you lost weight. Great. Like, are you healthy? Oh, yeah. yeah because I'm skinny. I'm like, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. That has really But even then, what are they do. losing? <laughs> yeah. They're losing more of their muscle. That's yeah. the problem, right? Uh, right? On the scale, it looks good. But what's actually happening isn't all that good. Exactly. Well, because you're probably Inside shocking too, right? your body, putting in like a fight or flight, right? Because you're, you're starving it of glucose, right? For your, your brain, brain. Especially. Is that correct? 
Like, um, I mean, that could be part of it. Well, one of the main arguments for the whole keto diet is that you put your body into this fat burning state, which is true, right? When you, when you're breaking fats down into ketones, you are breaking fats down. The issue is you're consuming so much fat. So all of a sudden they think that this fat's coming from all your body stores and everything. It's like, well, you're packing in so much more fat (laughs) that even if you're increasing your, your fat burning capabilities, you're still putting in purely fat. And so that's like just a a major issue or flaw with the logic on that too. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I watched a Netflix documentary about keto, and, and they were talking Magic about... Uh, yeah, that was what it was called. Magic <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. you know, you, you can't just run it, you know, I don't want to yeah. watch it, I don't want to know all the information. Like, I, I was curious, like, why are people yeah. so stuck on it? And yeah, it looked good for people with seizures, but... They're trying to sell it as this magic pill. Well, what was it called actually? It, 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 oh, magic so, pill. Okay. No, but it's also yeah. called Atkins, right? It's oh yeah, it's just like, it's just another yeah. word. They've been regurgitating the same diet with a different name for like twenty years, thirty years, like. <sighs> and yeah, know? with so with the magic pill, uh, there was very little science presented in that whole movie. I watched it. <laughs> I watched it with a friend of mine. Yeah. And I just kept getting triggered. I was like watching it. And I was just getting so triggered watching it because they're making all these claims, and there was like no science to back it up. Now, if you go watch the Game Changers or something, they've got references in the bottom left corner of like every point they're making. Um, and they, yeah, the study shown up on the screen as well. And yeah, the, the whole Magic Pill documentary was based on one family's anecdotes. That right. was basically it. Right. There's one family's anecdotes on a child who had a terrible, terrible diet, terrible, like, um, you know, processed food, junk food diet that's high in sugar and stuff, which nobody's saying is healthy, um, onto a uh, keto diet, which you know included some more vegetables and stuff as well. It's going to be an improvement regardless. Yeah. But yeah, I just I couldn't believe <laughs> how how much traction that thing got, and how it was. I saw it all over social media and everything when it was based on on very little. There there was hardly any science actually presented. <laughs> yeah, it was. I don't know. I just remember watching it, and then they were just like. Like it says, the magic pill for every anything you got eczema, mm-hmm. go on keto. He's like, yeah. you got cancer, go on keto. And it's like, huh? Yeah. Like, oh, let's talk about <laughs> cancer for a second. Yeah. So they, they, they because the they, the, well, one of the reasons for for the whole uh, keto thing too is they want to um, they want to starve your cancer cells of sugar, which makes sense. Right. And there yeah. are there are actually some trials with certain forms of brain cancer where they put people on a ketogenic yeah. diet along with chemo, and it actually seems to make the chemo more effective. So that's great. The issue is people will apply that to cancer, period. And what they leave out is that ketogenic diets actually promote other forms of cancer. So certain cancers feed on ketones, like breast cancer, for example. I believe like some type of uh, types of skin cancer also feed on ketones. So it can actually make other cancers worse. But because there's this little bit of research out there for one particular type of cancer, they apply it to all cancers. And then then they're putting people on a diet that's actually going to make the condition worse. Right. Yeah, I feel like they do that a lot. Like, there's only a little bit of research that says mm-hmm. something, and then, oh, I can make money off of that, and, yeah, you know, totally, sell right? them the, the magic pill or the dream that they're looking for. But then when people get off um, the keto diet, then they their body shape becomes the same after a while. Yeah, so no so well, I mean, that, that'll, go carbs, for, yeah. <laughs> that, that'll go for just about any kind of diet, though. You, you, you go out, that's why we want to make long-term sustainable lifestyle changes instead of just just a, a temporary diet but they show off like the keto work the keto diet works <laughs> but then it's like okay once you're off clever then, marketing yeah clever marketing totally <laughs> yeah. what i noticed is though like uh, talking about joe rogan again sorry oh Julia he was like saying like um he can't believe like m- like meat causes like diabetes what's yeah. your thought about that it, it just does like i don't know i don't know what else you offer it, the the research is very clear on that <laughs> that the more the more uh, meat, the more saturated fat you consume, the higher rates of diabetes. We we have um, studies. It's called uh, they use the euglycemic clamp. So what they do is they maintain a absolute constant blood sugar, and maintaining a constant blood sugar and and infusing them with fat causes insulin resistance, causes diabetes in a matter of hours. Um, so we literally know that we can turn somebody diabetic by injecting them with fat. We know that for sure. Um, Diet-wise, you can do very similar types of studies, but not over and over. And then Dr. Neil Bernard did a 74-week randomized controlled trial where he had two groups, one group doing the low-carb American Diabetes Association recommended diet. So it wasn't even just a random low-carb diet. It was like literally the diabetes recommendations. 
versus a low-fat vegan diet. The low-fat vegan diet resulted in greater uh, reductions of blood sugar, greater reductions in hemoglobin A1C, which is a marker of blood sugar control, also lowered cholesterol more, um, lowered other lipid markers more. It, it ended up being better across the board. And the most important thing was people's adherence to the program and their evaluations of how accessible it was and how easy it was to do was similar amongst both groups. So I always hear the argument that, oh, nobody's going to do the whole whole foods plant-based thing because it's too hard. Well, apparently they were just as willing to do it and thought it was just as easy as doing the low carb approach. Mm -hmm. So that's not an excuse anymore either. Yeah, yeah right. right. So plant-based fats are yeah. okay to eat, like even if it's sometimes high, like there's not uh, so, the risk really. Like I mean, uh, that's it's such a debatable topic. I, I personally think that for the average healthy person doing whole plant fats, so your avocados, your nuts, seeds, those types of foods, totally fine mm -hmm. uh, in whatever amounts. But for somebody with diabetes or for somebody with heart disease, right now, the research that we have shows a low fat diet works. Right. So until we have other data, which we just don't, um, that's probably the way to go. And that's the safest way to go because we know for sure it works. Right. That's great. Yeah, I've, I noticed like a lot of people, not a lot, but some people in social media are now showing off <laughs> with the carnivore diet. Like, yep. how is that <laughs> even sustainable? You know, like they just want to show off or what's that all about? Oh, I have no idea. It, it's yeah. it's just new and it's something that we don't have research on, which is, is always the argument I get is if I talk about how we know that, you know, eating more animal products is, is worse for us, they'll argue the quality of the meats and then they'll say, well, we don't have research on people doing full carnivore. And so what they're, what they're saying is that they think all the mountains of research we have showing that more meat consumption, especially red meat, uh, leads to higher rates of uh, colorectal cancer, heart disease, or just overall mortality. They're saying that once you go from eating a lot of that to eating only that, all of a sudden there's going to be a change. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and like, to like a decrease. Risk. It's like, we have these trends. We have these trends that are so linear and like, we know that it, that it uh, increases risk. I, I just can't understand how they would possibly think that going a hundred percent into that realm would somehow reduce risk it, it just makes zero sense to me um uh, i mean they're kind of doing a study right now for, you know by, by adopting <laughs> this and we're we're gonna see what happens and i don't think it's gonna be very good well blood blood yeah. tests don't lie and if yeah. you've yeah. ever seen some of those kind of diet people <laughs> oh yeah blood sean tests, baker yeah, yeah sean, sean baker, baker is, is, is the big the big name one his blood tests are horrendous yeah, low I mean, testosterone, testosterone of like um, was it uh, an diabetic <laughs> yeah he was literally diabetic like and but then they just use excuses his yeah. excuse for testosterone was uh the fact the that it's lower uh yeah well yeah he'll, he'll always talk about his deadlift yeah uh, but then <laughs> then uh, he talked about uh, testosterone being low as like oh well my testosterone's more or my testosterone receptors or whatever are more sensitive therefore i need yeah. less testosterone just like you know just really non-scientific answers like that to, to make excuses yeah and totally. they always like try to pick apart uh the science too like <laughs> oh well that was epidemiology and that can't yeah. be you know we throw all that out and then like they bring in an epidemiology thing of something <laughs> yeah, else yeah. to their point oh if, if we throw out epidemiology then we can't say that smoking causes cancer right like we don't so, have randomized controlled trials no. you know that was literally based on very consistent evidence from things like core yep. trials epidemiology and all that yeah yeah because i feel like <laughs> with uh paleo people and chris kresser he tends oh, yeah. to like oh, find things. He him. always <laughs> talks about cherry picking, and then I do yeah. his research, and he's cherry picking the same thing. Oh. But he's throwing out all the ninety, like eighty percent, sixty, seventy percent of the science will say one way, and he chooses the other thirty right. and goes with that. So. Oh, did, did you uh, did you happen to see my post on the game changers? I did. Yeah. 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 yeah so did. so he he. He just misquoted stuff left and right. He was talking about yeah. how the, the research on the Seventh Day Adventists didn't control for factors like they weight and, and tobacco when they clearly do. Like, I should just actually screenshot that and send it to him. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> and then uh, he was talking about how the, the Ornish, um, well, A, he was calling the Ornish diet a vegan diet, which it wasn't. It included low fat dairy. So again, he's, he's wrong. Um, and then, uh, and then he's talking about how the health benefits were because they were just adopting an overall healthier lifestyle and which is okay. Fair enough. That's a fair criticism, but then yeah. he doesn't even mention Esselstyn's research where it was just diet, nothing else. Um, it was just that there's, it, it's like to the point where it's dishonest, or at least the scenes dishonest. Um, mm. I, 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 I give him enough credit that I think he's smart enough to know that research already and that he's looked at it already. Yeah. 
may, maybe he hasn't. And okay, give him the benefit of the doubt. But I, I think he hasn't. I think he's he's smart enough to know that. And that's just the issue. Like I, I don't I don't like when when people are giving this kind of information that is harmful to people and yeah. fear mongering people. Too, and yeah. that's millions of people that are going to hear yeah. that and be like, oh yeah, well he's a chiropractor that does research, so I better trust him. Right, and he was at <laughs> Joe Rogan, so yeah, he has some credentials. Yeah. Well, it's just unfortunate that, you know, Joe Rogan's got sponsors in the meat industry. You can't really, mm-hmm. like, dumb them down, really. Because, I mean, he's being paid by them, so. Mm-hmm. Well, doesn't Chris Cresser sell animal products Well, yeah, he well? sells oh, collagen, know, so yeah, I'm sure does. he sells so, it all. Some yeah. supplementation I mean, that in- include, like, that's like one thing. contain animal products. But I don't think I've ever seen him publish or, like, be in the science. Like, he'll read the science that he wants to read, but he's yeah. not in the science. Like, he's not doing he's, his yeah. experiments. Uh, I, the thing is, I don't, I don't think he needs to. I don't think yeah. that matters. Like, look at Dr. Michael Greger. He doesn't do research. He just analyzes it very well. Um, right. And I, I don't think you need to be the ones doing it. It's actually really funny. Um, I think it was Robert Lustig did some research on sugar and, uh, you know, claimed that, that carbohydrates are what cause uh, weight gain and, and all these other issues. And uh, Garth Davis essentially proved him wrong about his own research um, with, you know, some, some mistakes that were made or something. So, so just like having done it yourself doesn't even mean you're the expert on that topic because right. Garth Davis did a really good job. It was on the doctor's TV show, actually. Yeah, we saw oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's oh, so yeah. annoying. <laughs> yeah, but I feel even Chris Cress is kind of bitter about when he was vegan, you know, he, he failed. Yeah. But he didn't, mm-hmm. he don't even know what he really ate. Like, he said he was a raw vegan. He said he didn't <laughs> supplement with B12. So right there, I already have issues on what he's claiming is the death of a... And I don't, he can't prove that we're not, that vegans aren't getting new nutrients. Like he always says that we're nutrient <laughs> deficient because we're not getting an abundance yeah. of, of nutrients from the meat. But like, come on, we all know, we can look at chronometer, we can see what we're doing. There's, oh, if we there's, don't, we don't even science. need chronometer. Yeah, we don't uh, need there's chronometer. A, there's, a, there's a study done uh, just a few years back in Switzerland where they compared omnivores to vegetarians and vegans and the vegans weren't even really supplementing b12 they had low intakes of b12 they actually consumed more sugar than the other groups so these weren't particularly super healthy vegans or anything um, or at least they weren't taking special care of their health like we would in the whole foods plant-based community but they were just better off nutrition wise than than mm-hmm. uh, the omnivores or the vegetarians in most categories um, they didn't actually even have higher rates of b12 deficiency funny enough and and yeah all sorts of um then Chris, like the, Chris we, Kresser we, we would say like that's the uh, healthy user bias. Healthy user bias, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, can't be true. Healthy yeah, user yeah, yeah. bias. I, and, and, and I don't the, trust uh, anything. Just You can yeah. use that for anything in science. The, the whole healthy that's user bias funny. <laughs> the whole healthy user bias is what he uses to discount again. Like I said, the Adventist research when yeah. they control for those factors know, and they are li- they are literally comparing the healthiest vegans in the world to the healthiest meat eaters in the world. Right. That's right. literally the comparison yeah. they're giving. And uh, yeah, it just drives me nuts. Yeah, because they always say uh-huh. the healthy user bias. I'm like, no, look at the research. They're counting <laughs> yeah. for smoking, drinking lifestyles. Yeah. It's not just like, oh well. Yeah, I don't even want to get into it. We have a whole, <laughs> whole podcast about Chris Kresser, Joe you Rogan. Do? No, you we, have a whole episode. We we could. Oh, yeah, I was saying could, yeah. we could call you. And we'll have a whole episode about it because you can talk for hours about it. It's, yeah. It gets ridiculous. That's it's, what happens. But I feel there's a war now, you know, with like some meat eaters and um, propaganda. Vegans. Yeah, like they even <laughs> see veganism as a propaganda. Are you kidding me? We have we have nothing to gain other than animals not being tortured mm-hmm. and killed. So like, right. well, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know, pe- people can call us biased for that, and that's fair enough. Like when when someone says I'm biased, I'll agree. Yes, I have a bias, sure. but they do too. Like yeah. that's the thing. Everybody has a bias, and and they. Um, they just don't like to admit that like Chris, Chris Kresser, for example, with his past experience that has, has, you know, jaded him a little bit in the whole plant-based world. And and that in itself makes him biased because of his personal experience or, um, people who enjoy eating animal products that in itself gives them a bias. Hell, I like eating bacon. Therefore, I should be considered less biased than somebody who still eats it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I like eating it, but I don't eat it because, A, it's terrible for you, and B, I don't want to cause unnecessary harm. Yeah. Right. Um, totally. So, so uh, like, there are so many different ways to look at that, and everybody's got some source of bias, but you just have to try to look at the evidence objectively. And, and when I get people trying to debate me um, on, you know, whether it be <laughs> Instagram or whatever, like, I'll just ask them for sources. Like, and people can message me their sources. That's fine. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Uh, but most of the time, they don't. 
because it is based on things they heard on in places like the you know Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> right. So exactly. Matt, what do you what do you say when someone says stop forcing the vegan propaganda on me? Because um, we're forcing it. <laughs> it's yeah, the like, science, right? Well, it, it depends what exactly kind of situation you're talking about. I, I tend to not. Um, uh, I try, tend to not start the conversation. I usually, uh, if somebody else, like a lot of people on my soccer team now, especially because of game changers, are wanting to try and they're asking me, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll talk to them all day about it. Um, <laughs> nice. But it, it's not like I, I went up to them first and was like telling my whole team to go vegan. I just lead <laughs> by example as the top scorer on my team. <laughs> so you know, um, right. I think that's better, uh, better activism in that sense. But mm-hmm. when it comes to, to forcing beliefs or whatever, I, I believe wholeheartedly that um, people who eat animal products actually force their beliefs on vegans far more. I think that happens way more. I think vegans are far more discriminated against um, all the time. I know uh, people who have had issues at work because of it and, you know, very immature things going on with their coworkers. And uh, usually people, first thing they'll say is, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm ordering whatever, as if I said anything. And I did. Yeah. I didn't say anything. You know? um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I think there's a huge misconception there. Yeah, yeah. It is. it's funny whether we judge them or not. They still think yeah. we're judging them. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, well, is this, <laughs> you must have something on your conscience. And, I wasn't going to say and, anything. And, cool. and then thinking we're judging them is in itself judging us. <laughs> like, yeah, it's uh, yeah, so. we're always at uh, a loss, I guess. <laughs> they just don't want to uh, admit that you know maybe we shouldn't be doing this harm to animals and not the best way to go about doing stuff totally. if we don't have yeah. to it's unnecessary yeah. right yeah, so, yeah right. for sure do you have any advices for listeners that really want to go 100 percent plant-based but they kind of feel too shy like especially when they're in the <laughs> work environment or in school and they want to have more friends you know but they feel like mm-hmm. they can't get more friends when they go plant-based honestly it, it's like well, for starters, on the on the friend uh, t- uh, topic, I would suggest to most people that they actually look for vegan or, or plant based type events in their community, whether it be potlucks or maybe some animal rights stuff that goes on. You meet really great people that way, and you'll often like I find a lot of the newbies um, end up going to those types of things. So you'll see people who are only maybe a few months into their journey, and you guys can kind of learn together. I think that's right. really good. Um, as for dealing with other people. I mean, you do, you don't need to, especially early on while you're still learning and you don't have all the facts and, and you know, arguments are just going to be exactly that. They're just going to be arguments. You don't have to be overly vocal about it. Just if you're having a, a you know plant-based meal at school or whatever, just to have it and people might ask you about it and you can tell them what it is, but you don't need to right away try to convert everybody. It, it's um, I think it's going to be a lot more effective if you A, get more comfortable with it and then educate yourself more about what um you know the nutrition aspects the environmental the ethical um and uh yeah i I just i don't know that um like i i've never had that from friends where i've really been uh say bullied i've heard of other people who've dealt with that which is really unfortunate so maybe i'm not the best person to ask about that just because i didn't have that personal experience my my friends tended to be very supportive you know they'll throw the odd joke here or there but i'll throw it right back at them so but you're confident right that's the key you gotta be confident but if you're not but if you're shy you gotta work on your confidence i feel Mm -hmm. yeah and i think that comes with knowledge so that comes literally with educating yourself yeah, exactly. Totally. Yeah. Like, you know, say if someone wants to make a joke about, you know, vegans not being manly or whatever, I'll say, uh, you know, vegans have higher rates of testosterone or, or now yeah, I'll just take, point them to the game changer. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, now I'll just point them to the game changer scene and let them watch that. I have it recorded on my phone so I can show people if I ever need. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ooh, wow. <laughs> smart. A little, little five minute scene. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, exactly. So, how, how are the responses then from the people you show it? Do you get a lot oh, of, it's like, hilarious! It, like, it, it, it's it's it, hilarious. Or? No, no, no. no. I, no. I think it's hilarious. Like everyone just laughs. People yeah. just laugh at it. it it's super <laughs> funny. The, the way that it was done was so well done. Um, <laughs> and, and and the funny thing is, so people want to discredit it, like you know Joe and and Chris were doing on their podcast, but they're doing a randomized controlled trial right now on that. So they're actually doing a a proper study now, and they'll publish it. And once those results come out, I'd like to see them, uh, you know, try to debunk that as well. <laughs> I wonder who funded that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it gained so much traction. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't get uh, too much of an issue. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, finding somebody. Yeah, exactly. So uh, any exciting future plans? Yeah. Ahead. 
Yeah. Um, future plans. Well, I uh, actually I just got asked to speak at the Penticton Veg Fest, so I might be coming there oh, uh, to speak. Um, still, just just working at the clinic. That's number one. I'm working on building a web page right now, which is almost ready to launch. So that'll just be mostly some of the information I share. Um, if I was to write any say blog posts, they'd end up there. It's mostly like a hub for all my stuff. So whether it be podcast, like once this podcast is up, I can have it on there. Um, uh, and you know, just that kind of thing, booking links and contact links and, and just so pretty simple. Um, and then I actually just put in a um, application to speak at the, uh, American Association of Naturopathic Physicians Conference, which is the largest, um, naturopathic conference in North America, I believe. Where is um, it? so, so that'll be in July. So it's, it's a big conference for my profession coming up in July. So yeah. I just um, put in the application. Not sure yet uh, if I'll end up being on there, but I think there's a decent chance. And if I do end up going on there, it'll be to talk about like the myths behind a plant-based diet. So right. things like iron, protein, that kind of stuff. Right. Where will the conference be? Do you know yet? Yeah. It'll be in Denver, Colorado. Oh, okay. Nice. nice. In yeah. the summer or winter? <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> July. July. It'll be oh, July. Okay. Good. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. That's good to know. Wow, you have a lot going on. Yeah, busy, busy, busy. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and actually in, in Vancouver, there's a zero waste uh, event coming up, the zero waste vegan market. Um, right. I'll be speaking at that too. So I don't, people oh. just keep asking me and I just keep saying, okay. So Yeah, you need to get that <laughs> website up so they can yeah. uh, follow you. Right. Yeah, so how can the listeners find you? Like, where's your practice and uh, best way to contact you? So I'm practicing at Tanumi Integrated Health on Commercial Drive in Vancouver. You can find me on Instagram at Dr. Matthew Niagara. So it's Dr. Matthew Niagara. Um, same thing on Twitter, but I honestly don't use it very much. And then for Facebook, it's just Dr. Matthew Niagara ND. Should be pretty easy to find. Um, and then I've got all my info there. So on my Instagram page, I've got the link in, in the bio there. And if you click on that, it'll take you to the booking website as well as um, past uh, podcasts or articles or whatever that I've written. But that'll change once the website's up. Right. Uh, website link well, we up. can't wait. Yeah, let us know the website. We'll put it up in the show yeah. notes yeah. and we'll have everything up there if anyone wants to contact you and need Sounds some good. help. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks again for your time. Yeah, You're thanks welcome. For your time. Thanks for having and me. And the knowledge and... Yeah. <laughs> And debating about Joe yeah. Hogan. Exactly. <laughs> so I guess was one of the more aggressive uh, ones I've done. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, we that's really good. You need to, well, you need to show people, you know, um, vegans <laughs> can be a bit aggressive too if we need to, you know. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. And very inspiring, you know. We admire your work and we need Thank more you. people like you. And, you know, it, you just, you just about getting started here, I yeah, think. Yeah, you just you know? started. Yeah. You're going to be like a rocket ship and going to like... <laughs> To the moon. Yeah, back. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I see a lot of things happening in a great way, you know. Thank you. We're so actually blessed to have you in Vancouver. You know, yes. we need more Thanks. people like you everywhere in the world. I agree. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So keep up the great work and uh, we see you around. Yeah, we'll talk soon. Yeah. We'll do a game changer, Joe Rogan. <laughs> uh, there you go. No, I, I want to see him. Uh, he, he said he would have James Wilkes, the, the main guy from the Game Changers on his show. So I'm yeah. hoping he does that. We'll I want him to have uh, McGregor uh, Gregor on Michael there. Michael Gregor, Michael yeah. Gregor That'd on be there. great. Because yeah. he, or Garth he's, Davis. Yeah, or Garth Davis, because those guys, <laughs> yes. I think, would be a better fit to battle it out. That poor Dr. Yeah. Khan, like he got like yeah, beaten up. Yeah, poor Dr. Khan, I feel like was just in a corner and they were like two on one, pouncing yeah. on him. So. Yeah. Not Redemption. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Let's It'll see happen. what happens. It'll yeah. happen, maybe. All yeah. right. <laughs> well, have a great day and uh, yeah, take care. Yeah, we'll talk to yeah. you soon. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Ciao. Bye.